a new day, showing us where the darkness has been, even as the darkness is dispelled. It comes with joy in the new knowing, perhaps even some passing tears, as that darkness still touches us, even as it leaves. Usually some confusion as well, because this resurrection light is so new. It's different. It's strange. And as for individuals, so too for generations. You know, the way the early medieval church carried the message of Easter now seems dark to us. Because the risen Christ always has something new for us to learn. The bleakness of life in those days, uh, nasty, brutish, and short, as we usually remember that longer string of adjectives that Thomas Hobbes gives, made it easy for the church to overemphasize the passive nature of the things of the world and relegate it all as trivial, as worthless, only heaven mattered. And so things done to one another on earth, well, we're just mortal. We're not dealing with immortal souls here. But then again, in our day, we have so idolized happiness that we have lost the art of detachment from things of the earth. We have taken carpe diem, seize the day, too far. We need to encounter the risen Christ again and again to help us find our balance in the reality which has one foot planted on this earth, but also our eyes pointing toward the next. Ultimately, it is the daybreak of Easter that shines on our path and allows us to find that right balance between things of this world in light of the next. And the risen Christ calls each of us by name, by your name. Right where you are, in a moment of encounter in which we are shown our own path into lives of deep joy and peace. As it is with individuals, again, so too with generations. The encounter with the risen Christ allows us to hear the wisdom of a child, to see Christ and the man coming to spray our houses for bugs, to wonder, what does this person right in front of me or right next to me have to show me about Christ? So, of course, there's much more to say, but not today. When we leave here, we're going back to the context of our lives. We're going to go back to our tasks and our people. We're going to go back to situations in the larger world. Uh, it is with great sadness that we have to acknowledge that on Easter Sunday, several terrorist bombings in Sri Lanka have taken the lives of at least 140 people. We go back to these things, and it is tempting to go back to a way of thinking in which we come to despair. Is this all there is? And we lose track of what our daily round really means. But Christ is risen. Christ is risen for you. And so I encourage you to ask, what does the risen Christ mean for me today? Keep asking that question, and I believe you will find yourself in the midst of encounter which will lead you out of darkness, which will shine a light on your life and show you the way to go. And then, what can we say? What can we say in response except thank you, Lord? A simple thank you.